Advanced Financial Accounting Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to forward exchange contract to manage foreign currency net asset or liability position. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Here we are in Excel. We have the information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area on the right-hand side, including our journal entries and into our trial balance worksheet, of which we have two of, where we have year one and year two. Let's take a look at the data on the left. We're going to have a forward exchange contract, so we'll be dealing with a forward exchange contract to manage and expense foreign currency net asset or liability position, not a designated uh, hedging instrument. The timeline will look like this. We're going to have the transaction date, which is going to be a purchase of inventory on account. So purchase of inventory, basically that we're going to pay for at a later time. We're going to have an accounts payable related to it. However, it's going to be paid off in yen, 3 million yen. So we're going to have that transaction take place. Then we'll have the balance sheet date will happen. So we'll have to readjust the uh, currency related to that balance sheet date for the balance sheet to be correct as of that point in time. Then we'll have the settlement date where we will be paying off the accounts payable liability denomination will be in yen so we have our currency we're going to be a u.s company we have our currency in dollars we're gonna to have to deal with the fact that we'll be paying this thing in yen and therefore have an exchange rate that we will have to deal with the signed 180 day forward exchange contract to receive the yen so now we're going to we're going to basically say that we're, this is where the forward contract comes into play. So you want to think about these things as two different things, although they're happening kind of uh, at the same point in time. Right. So we're going to enter into the forward exchange contract uh, on the same time frame when the transaction took place on 10 one and then 180 days later, meaning uh, the settlement date will be 4 one X two. So in other words, this thing starts in October. So we got October, November, December, January, February, and then March. And then this is, is that would be six months, right? 180 days if we, if we have 30 day uh, months here. So then we have obtained yen by settling the foreign exchange contract. So we're going to settle the foreign exchange contract, which will provide us with the yen, which will then use to pay off the accounts payable. And then we have to pay the yen to settle the accounts payable. So this is going to be our spot rates and our forward exchange rates that will be uh, relevant to these dates within the problem. Then we have the purchase inventory on account. This is going to be the same information as up top, although this should be 3 million yen. Same information as we have up here, just so it's closer to the table down below. Now let's recap that one more time. So we're a U.S. company. We're going to be purchasing inventory from, from a Japanese company, a company in Japan. We're going to be purchasing it using yen. We're going to purchase it first on account, which means we're going to purchase it and pay the account later on 10-1. Then we're going to pay this thing off in the following year on 4-1 X-2. We're going to pay it off in yen. Therefore, we're going to have to deal with the foreign exchange in order to do that, in order to make that payment. Now, in, we're also going to be then entering in the forward exchange contract, which will have the same time frame, but you want to think of them kind of a separate type of thing. And they're going to counterbalance in some ways the activity of the gains and losses related to the currency for, for generally. So we have the 10-1. Uh, so that's going to have the same component. It's going to start on 10-1 and end on 4-1. So that's going to be our information. Let's uh, work this out and see what it will look like. So we got the inventory that we're going to be purchasing. We're going to put the inventory on the books. That's just going to be an asset just like it normally would. We're going to purchase it on account, meaning we're not paying for it now. We will pay for it later. So we purchased it on account, which will be accounts payable just like we would normally expect. Uh, but the accounts payable will not be in dollars. We're going to indicate the fact that we're going to be paying in yen. Now I'm going to record this little thing to record the account payable. In order to format this, I just made it red and then I made it uh, uh, the italics. So you could do that if you want. You could put a little red thing and that can help you to differentiate to put yourself a note. Uh, another way you might want to do this is if this is your personal sheet that you're working in is just to right click and then uh, add a note or a comment. And if you do that, then it'll only appear if you hover over it. So you can give yourself some notes in your worksheet without having them be really uh, just sticking out like that. But I don't want to do that in a practice problem like this because I want it to show all the time. Okay, so then we're going to say we want the inventory on the books. We're going to put the inventory on the books. We're going to use the current spot rate, not the forward rate when putting the inventory on the books, even though we're not paying for it at this time. We're going to pay for it in the future. We're going to pay for it on 
uh, April 1st. However, we're putting it on the books as of today using today's spot rate, not the forward rate. That's going to be the, the general rule it will uh, be putting in place. So we're going to say we bought it for, you know, what we expect it to be as of the current exchange or spot rate at this time, 3 million times 0 0.007. That's going to be the 21,000. So let's do that calculation up here again. So I'm going to put my cursor here. We're going to say this is going to be equal to, I'm going to pick up this 3 million times the spot rate on October 1st. And that's going to be the 21,000. Now, of course, that spot rate means that uh, we have for we have 1 yen equal to 0 0.007 dollars at this point in time. The forward rate is that 1 yen we predict to equal 0 0.0075 uh, US dollars, but that's what we expect to happen or be the case uh, 180 days from now. So we're taking the spot rate, not the forward rate here. Okay, so then the next thing that's going to happen is on 10-1, we're also going to be putting on the uh, forward contract at the same time. You want to think of it separately, although we're, you know, there, we have the forward contract for, in some degree related to this transaction above. It was to manage an exposed foreign currency net asset or liability position. So we typically will have an asset and a liability. That's going to be the foreign currency receivable and the payable which is the dollar payable to the exchange broker uh, will be due to this uh, Ford exchange contract so it's important to note that uh, the, the foreign currency receivable from the exchange broker will be in yen so we expect to receive then money in yen the 3 million yen in the future at 41x2 that's what we expect to get and we're going to make a payment at that point in time but we're going to make the payment in cash so this amount represents just basically dollars. This amount's not going to change, whereas this amount will change. You know, the exchange, our valuation of it will change because we're going to be receiving foreign currency in the future from this receivable. We're only going to be paying U.S. dollars. All right. So we're going to calculate this using the forward exchange rate now. So we're going to use the forward exchange rate. Now we're going to be using this rate, which means that this rate means that we're always pointing to the, to the time period that, that it's going to end at which in this case is 41x2. So this is as of uh, October 1st, we're speculating what the rate kind of will be 180 days from now on 41x2. So let's do that. We're going to say 3 million times 0 0.0075. We got the 22.5. 22.5. Let's do that again up here. We're going to say that this will be equal to, we're going to pick up the 3 million times the 0 0.0075, the 0 0.0075. So that's a 225, 225 on the debit and on the credit. Let's post both of these out because I didn't post them out last time and we should like post them. So I'm going to post this one here. We got the inventory. Inventory is going to go on the books. That's going to be here. Inventory is then going to be increasing with a debit. Then we got the accounts payable. That's going to be increasing with the credit. The accounts payable. Now remember, the accounts payable is going to be receiving. We're going to be receiving yen, but we're currently valuing that as twenty-one thousand dollars. We're actually going to get three million yen. Okay, and then we're going to record this one where we're going to say foreign currency receivable from the exchange broker is going to be here, and that's going to be the twenty-two-five. And then we have the dollar payable to the exchange broker. That'll be down here in dollars. This is going to be equal to the twenty-two. Five on the credit side okay next relevant date is going to be the balance sheet date that happens on 1231 we're gonna to have to make our financial statements and therefore we will have to revalue these items as of that date that means we're going to revalue this account to reflect the current exchange rate using the spot um, using the forward rate and we're going to reevaluate this one uh, to the current exchange rate using the spot rate we're not going to revalue this one because this one we're actually going to pay in US dollars. All right. So then let's do the receivable first. Let's pick up, let's pull up the trusty calculator here. I'm going to pull down the trusty calculator. So we currently have the receivable on the books here at the 22.5, the 22.5. So now we're going to say now it's the December 31st. We're going to take the forward rate looking 90 days forward at this point in time to the end period, same end period being. April 1st, but now it's 90 days away from this current point in time that we're currently at, which is December 31st. So we're going to say then that we have 3 million 
oh, too many zeros, times the 0 0.0075, oh, and that's 0 0.0077. So there we have it, that 0 0.0077. There's the 23.1. We currently have in there 22.5, so minus the 22.500. We have a $600 difference. That $600 difference is going to result in a gain that we're going to record. Why a gain? Because last time we had 1 yen was worth $0.0075. Now 1 yen is worth $0.0077. The yen is now worth more dollars. Therefore, it got stronger. We're talking about the receivable, which we're going to be getting paid in yen. So we're going to get paid in something that has now a stronger value than it had been before when we made the contract to receive that amount of yen. Therefore, we have a gain. So we're going to record that gain. We're going to say, all right, we've got a gain and we're going to increase the foreign currency. So foreign currency is going to be going up the receivable and then we'll have the gain. The gain is going to go up with a credit. Now we're going to calculate this 600 again, a little bit different way by, by subtracting the basically the rates. And then, so I'm going to do it this way. We'll just show you. We're going to take brackets. We're going to pick up the, I'm going to pick the larger of the two rates we're dealing with because I want a positive number on the debit side. So the 0 0.077 minus the 0 0.0075 brackets. Note you need brackets for the order of operations to take place because now we're going to use a multiplication times the 3 million. So there's the $600 debit and the credit. Let's go ahead and post this out. We're going to say here's the foreign currency receivable, foreign currency receivable up top. We're going to be right here double clicking on that item, going to the end of it saying plus and picking up that $600. Then on the other side, we're going down to the gain, down to the gain down below. This is going to be equal to the credit of the $600. Now there is that. So now we have our receivable at that 23,100, which you will recall was the one or the three million yen times 0 0.0077. And that's going to be that 23, uh, one. So the 23 one. So now we're, uh, we'll do the same thing for the receipt, the payable. Now we're going to do the same thing for the payable or similar thing to the payable. We need to revalue it as of the balance sheet date, but this time we're going to be using the spot rate to do so. So this one we use the spot rate for. So, cause, cause this was not the forward contract. We're just using the normal exchange rate. So now it's December 31st X one. We're using the normal exchange rate. This is what we would typically exchange the money for at this point in time. If we were just to exchange the money, we're not exchanging money, but we're just revaluing to the current point at this time. And this is note, this is kind of like, you know, a market rate at this time, because money would probably would be exchanging at that point. So these are based on market rates. So in any case, so now we're going to take that one, which is going to be the 3 million times the 0 0.008. So that's going to be the 24,000. And we're going to say that what is currently in there is that 21,000. So I'm going to take that minus the 21,000. That's going to be a $3,000 difference. That $3,000 difference is going to be a loss, which we would expect because this one was a gain. And normally these things are opposite. Why are they kind of opposite normally? Well, we're using the spot rate, which isn't quite the same, but the spot rate here is last time uh, one yen was 0 0.007. Uh, US dollars and now one yen's worth 0 0.008 US dollars. Therefore, the yen has gotten stronger. You get more US dollars for each yen, uh, and therefore uh, it's gotten stronger. And we're in this case, we have a payable. We're going to be paying in yen. We're going to be paying something in a in a format that now has gotten stronger, which isn't good. We're going to have to give something up that has now gotten stronger. Now it's not the same difference because, of course, we're using the spot rates here versus the forward rates for the forward contract. Okay, so then we're gonna say that we have the loss, which we'll put on top because it's gonna be a debit. So we're gonna say we have a loss up here. Let me move the calculator out of the way. And then we got the loss. And then the other side is going to be for the, we're gonna say the loss and then the payable, the payable. And let's calculate it again. We're going to calculate it using that other kind of method, subtracting the two rates first, then multiplying. So I'm going to take the larger of the two rates because I want it to be a positive because we're on the debit side of things, minus the smaller of the two rates. I'm going to close up the brackets, multiply it then times that 3 million yen to see that difference of the 3,000. There's the debit and there is the credit. Let's go ahead and post this out. We got the loss first. The loss will go on the income statement, of course. 
This will then be equal to the 3,000 loss. Notice these two kind of net each other out. You know, at least they're going in opposite directions, typically. So then we have the uh, payable. Payable is going to be up top. Something's in it. We're going to double click on it. Go to the end of it and say plus. Pick up that 3,000. 3,000 there. That puts us to the payable of the 24,000. The 24,000 then should be, as you recall, the one million or not that's not one million we're on three million times the 0 0.008 so there's the 24,000 so that looks good all right so now we're going to move on to uh to the to the following year so now we're in x2 so we're going to move down to this trial balance down here so the ending trial balance numbers were here we're now going to move on to the beginning trial balance for year two Noting that the income statement accounts, these two accounts have rolled into equity. So this is the equity now at the 97.6 is going to be this 97.6. This is a post-closing trial balance at the end of year uh, one or the beginning trial balance at uh, year two. Okay, so now we're going to say that it is for uh, one, for one. And by the way, we could put some other uh, notes here. I could say that this second transaction up top, I'll just put a little note on that one. And then this transaction here, we'll put a note there just to, to uh, give us a little reminder if we want to have a little bit more direction on them as we go back to them. Okay, so, so now we're gonna say on 4-1, that's the settlement date. So we're gonna pay off the payable and we're going to end the the forward contract at that point in time so let's first think about then the let's think about the receivable so we got the receivable here and that's at the 23 100 we're going to revalue it now to the to the current point in time which is 41 41 x2 of the following year so we're going to do the similar kind of thing we did uh before we're going to say all right here's the three million now, we would normally say, let's multiply that times the, the current forward rate, but there is no forward rate. Why is there no forward rate? Because we're currently at April 1st, 2000 uh, X2, which was the end point that we were aiming at the whole time. It went from 180 days down to 90 days down to no days. And so there's no prediction involved here. It simply is the spot rate. So we're going to take that 3 million times the spot rate, 0.0076. That's going to be the 228. And what is currently in there in terms of our receivable minus the 231, we get the uh, $300. So $300, that's going to be a loss that we have. Why is it a loss? Because the last time we had point oh, we had one yen was equal to $0.0077. And now one yen's worth $0.0076. So it's worth less dollars. So it's been weakened. The yen has been uh, has gone down in value. This is a receivable. We're going to get paid in yen, and they're now worth less. So that would result in a loss. So we'll pick up the loss. Then we're going to say, all right, got a loss in the in the second year, and then the other side is going to go to that uh, receivable. Other side going to the receivable. We will recalculate this once again by subtracting our rates that are involved. So I'm going to say this equals the larger rate for the prior period. Forward rate minus the current spot rate because we're at the end of the time period. And multiply that times the 3 million. Times the 3 million. There's going to be the debit. There's going to be the credit. Let's go ahead and record that loss then. So the loss is going to be down here. On the trial balance, we're going to pick up that $300 debit. Then we have the foreign currents receivable. So we got the foreign currents receivable up top. We're going to pick up that credit. That brings us to the 228. So that 228, you'll recall, is uh, the way we calculate the 228 is going to be the 30 million times the 0 0.0076. That's going to be the 228 at this point. Okay, then we're going to do a similar process for the accounts payable. So we got the accounts payable now, which is going to be here. I, I keep moving the calculator around. Sorry about that. But we're going to be at that 24000 on the accounts payable. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say that that needs to be at this point 3 million times the 0 0.0076, the current spot rate. 
26.0076. Once again, being at 22.8, we currently have in there the 24,000. So minus the 24,000 means we're going to have a change of 1,200. That change is going to result in a gain. Why is it going to result in a gain? Because last time we used this spot rate, which was 1 yen was 0 .008 uh, dollars. Now 1 yen is worth 0 .0076 dollars. The yen is now worth less dollars, so it's weakened. The yen is going to be weakened, and we're paying in yen. We're going to be paying the accounts payable. We're paying out using something that has less value than it had before. That means we have a gain uh, on, on that transaction. So we're going to say, all right, the accounts payable is going to go down. So because we're paying less in terms of U.S. dollars when we pay this thing off in yen. And then the other side is going to be the gain the other side is going to be the gain let's calculate it again so we're going to calculate it again we're going to say that this will be equal to we'll do it that in our second kind of method here brackets we're going to pick up the 0 0.008 minus the 0 0.0076 brackets times the 3 million and there's going to be the 1200 on the debit and the credit side let's go ahead and post this out to the payable post into the payable we're going to be over here and say this is going to be equal to picking up that debit of the 1,200, now the 22.8. Now we're going to be posting out the gain. Posting out the gain down below in the income statement. That's going to be equal to the 1,200. We're now at the 1,200 there. You can see that these two net each other out. Not exactly, but they typically go in opposite directions, right? And uh, we know that this amount, the 22.8, will of course be the... 300 or 3 million times the 0 0.0076 is how you calculate the 22.8. All right. So then we're going to say that we, we're going to get or pay off this payable. We got this payable right here because it's the end of the contract now. So we're going to be paying that off. Nothing tricky about this thing. This thing is in dollars. I'll, I'll refer to it with a little dollar sign. Meaning it's in U.S. dollars. We didn't change it since the beginning. Like we put it on the books up here when we first put the Ford contract on the books in year one. And then it just sat there just like a normal payable. And we're going to pay it off at the end, which is now, which is nothing special, nothing tricky. It's just a payable in dollars. So we're going to say, all right, that means that the payable is going to go down. And then cash is going to go down. And it's going to be for the amount that's in there, which is the 22.5. So I'm just going to pick up that 22.5. If you want to see the calculation of where, where that came from, it was the 3 million times the original rate or the forward rate when we started the forward contract. And there's the calculation of the 22.5. There's the debit. There's the credit. Let's go ahead and post that out. We've got the accounts payable. Something's in it. Uh, oh, sorry. Nothing's in it. <laughs> so we're going to be down here. This is going to be equal to the 22.5 debit, bringing it down to zero. We got the cash then. Cash is going to be up top in the cash uh, in the cash entries area. We got the 22.5, bringing it down to the 77.5. Okay. So then we're going to say that we're going to have the second side of the foreign contract that will that we're going to receive money on but the money is not going to be in current in our currency in u.s currency we're going to receive the yen the three million yen which we're going to record on our books valuing it in u.s currency just like we would if we received anything else like you know a fixed asset or something like that something other than cash or stocks or something like that so we're going to put it on the books then we're going to put it on the books as just like another asset it says foreign currency units, so you might say, hey, it's money, it's revenue, it should be in with cash, but it's not really cash, it's kind of like an investment to us, because ca even though it's very liquid, we could still spend it, you know, look, it's a current asset for sure, a liquid asset, it's not cash, it's not cash to us, it's not our measuring tool, so we're just going to measure it in terms of cash, but what we really have is 3 million yen, all right, and we've already, we've, we've already done the calculation on, on the calculation being the 3 million times the current spot rate 0 0.0076 that's that 22.8 and then if we go to the credit side of things we have the receivable so the receivable then is going to go down of course 22.8 is in the receivable we're going to uh, remove the receivable and record the the units that we got so we'll record the currency up here we're going to say that we got the foreign currency 22.8 that's going to be the debit remember what we really got 
was the 3 million yen, which we're valuing in US dollars at the 22.8 US dollars. And then we're going to say that the receivable is going to go down. Something's in there. I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it and say plus, and we will credit the receivable that will then bring it down to zero. So now we've got the 22.8 in uh, the foreign currency, which is really that $3 million. It's representing the value of this $3 million of yen for 3 million yen. And then we're going to be paying off the payable, which was 22.8, which we need to pay off not in US dollars, but in the 3 million yen. So that so we're so both the payable and of course the the units now reflecting the value of what we're going to be using as the payment in this transaction, which is 3 million yen. Okay, so we're going to then say that the payable is going to go down. So we have the accounts payable going down. And then we've got the foreign currency units is going to be going down and we can recalculate it again if we want just for the fun of it. And why wouldn't we because it is fun to do. It's the 3 million times the spot rate at this point, 0.0076 to 22.8. There it is once again. 22.8, is that's the way to calculate. And then we got the accounts payable. Let's go ahead and record that. Double clicking on this item plus picking up that 22.8, bringing that 22.8 that was over there down to zero. And then we've got the foreign currency and units up top. Double clicking on that. And once again, that 22.8 that's here is going to go down by this 22.8 down to zero. So now that's gone. What we're left with then, here's what cash is. The foreign currency in units has now been spent. That we, we got that from the forward contract that we now spent to pay off the payable that was in foreign currency. Then we had the foreign currency receivable from the exchange broker. Now back down to zero because we have received it. Inventory on the books at the 21,000. Notice that that 21,000 represents the original you know, point of time that we got the the inventory. In other words, if we take the 3 million times times the spot rate when we first got the inventory, not when we paid it, times the 0 0.007, we got the inventory on the books at the 21,000, even though we didn't pay for it at that time. Differences in the exchange value of the currency then not being capitalized in the inventory that we bought, but rather being recorded on the income statement in terms of gains and losses in the in the prior year uh, for for both the forward contract and the accounts payable and then gains and losses basically in the current year. So no T in here, inventory not touched. It's basically the thing that we bought is sticking on on there, even though we bought it on account and there were changes to the exchange value between the point in time that we bought it and the point in time that we paid for it. Then we have the accounts payable in uh, yen has now been paid off. So we paid that off. The dollars payable to the exchange broker for the forward contract has now been paid off. Retained earnings has been affected for year two by the end of year one because it has rolled over into it. And then the current income statement is now being affected by the changes in the value of the currency over the current time period.